me. Yeah, are you showing them the heart? Show them. We need 40. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel. We love you guys, and today is an exciting video. Mommy, hola, mommy. Say hello. 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 It has been a while since we have done an Operation Christmas Child OCC video, and we're going to tell you guys why in this video, so stay tuned. No. But I have a bunch of questions from you guys hello. and some answers that I've written. You wanted Elephant to be able to say hi. Say hello. 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 So today, hello, baby. Mm -hmm. today is Saturday and we're getting ready to go to ministry. And as we go throughout the day, I'm going to answer some of your questions. And the biggest question is why? 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 Say why. Why? Didn't. Baby. You, you do, do OCC OCC this year. That's your biggest question. Why didn't we do Operation Christmas Child this year? Mommy, and we're going to tell you about that in just a second. Mommy, choose, <coughs> mommy, choose, mommy, choose this yeah. year. Yeah. Mommy, mommy, Rudolph, choose. Yeah, Eliana has Pedialyte because poor thing is still battling her cold. I'm still battling the cold. My voice is a little bit no, froggy George. and keeping her hydrated because she's not eating as much and she drinks more through a syringe than anything else. So anyway, we're going to answer your OCC questions throughout this video. Also subscribe and stay tuned because we're going to have a few more OCC related videos in the upcoming weeks. So we are not totally not doing OCC, but OCC did change for us a little bit this year. Why don't we jump in with that first question and I'm going to explain to you guys why didn't we do Operation Christmas Child this year? Well, the goal of Operation Christmas Child is one child, one shoebox, one time in their life. And all of the kids in our church, in our ministry, have already received a shoebox. If we were to do Operation Christmas Child again, we would need to do it as a church, but we would need to do it with new kids. It would have to be an outreach evangelism type event where we were going to new kids in a new neighborhood and a new community and inviting them to come to our church using the Operation Christmas Child program, the 12 weeks of discipleship. But because we have low staff, we have my husband, myself, Landy, who you guys have probably seen in videos, and that's really our entire church leadership. And so if we were to try to do something else this year, we just don't have the staff to make the best of the Operation Christmas Child materials at this time. Do we want to do OCC in the future? Yes. It's just not the right time right now. And so in the future, when we have new kids that haven't heard the gospel, that haven't heard or used the OCC curriculum. And so really, that's what we're waiting for. We're waiting for the right time, the right occasion, so that we can really make the best use of the OCC materials. And doing it again for the same kids isn't, isn't what the purpose of the materials are. And so that's why we didn't do OCC this year. But yes, we plan to do it in the future. We just have to wait for God. More peace. Yeah. More peace. We just have to wait for God to bring more helpers, more volunteers, and open those doors. Um, we're also going to use this opportunity to open a few packages that we got. So we're going to show you those open, in a moment. Please. We should open the box, shouldn't we? Okay. Becky asked a question. She said, have you noticed any of your girls getting a sewing kit and what was their reaction? Also, it was suggested that we provide eating utensils in the box. We were already packing water bottles, but we hadn't thought about silverware. Is that a need that you see? So in terms of sewing kits, yes, I have seen a ton of girls get them, especially the 10 to 14 year old age. And I will say... The girls aren't necessarily super excited about sewing because many of them don't know how. However, the biggest comment that I hear when they open a box with a sewing kit is, look, it's something my mom can use, or I'm excited to share this with my mom, or I wonder if my mom can help fix XYZ a pants or a button or, or a shirt or something. And so are they excited? Yes. Do they necessarily know how to use it? No. However, it is something useful. 
and it is something that they get excited about. Can They're just usually more excited about sharing it with their with their mom. In terms of eating utensils, I think Becky made a really great point. I think the biggest and most important thing is a water bottle. Um, that is useful no matter where they live, what the climate. Um, eating utensils, I'd say, is not as big of a need because most families have eating utensils. A lot of communities eat with their hands. Um, so if it's like a more native region, whether that's in a jungle area in Latin America or even potentially in Africa, a lot of those people have their forms of eating utensils. And so I would say eating utensils aren't necessarily the biggest need. If you wanted to provide them, go for it. It's not that you shouldn't. Just, I'd say pray about it and see if that's something that's on your heart to provide. But I would say that eating utensils are probably easier to come by than a water bottle. So if you had to choose eating utensils or water bottle, go for the water bottle. All right, you ready to open some boxes? Okay, hold still. Okay, let's open this box first because this one is one that mommy and daddy actually purchased. Yeah, you guys gave us the idea. I can't remember who it was, but you guys gave us the idea and we went for it. are actually books for my husband. Um, he is in seminary, and so he has to get materials for his seminary classes. I believe El Misterio Revelado, uh, the, mis the Mystery Revealed, Discovering Christ in the Old Testament. I believe this is one that he needed for school. Hold on, hold on, we're going to take it out. Yeah, we'll take it out in just a second, I promise. So this is a book for my husband. And then... <clears throat> Um, the steps to freedom in Christ. And so this is one that my husband got so that he can read through it to see if it's something that we could use for discipleship in the future. So two books for ministry there. And then this is the one that you guys inspired us. <coughs> There's three of them. One of you guys actually sent us the Action Bible. And one... One week, I used it with the teens, and I'll put that video up here. But what we noticed, we had to pass it around because we only had one copy. And so each teen would read a part of the story, and then we let them look through it. But we loved it so much, and it really did engage the teens, which is what... I know, I know there's another box. Which is what one of you guys told us. You said that it was a really engaging way of reading the Bible. And so it worked, and it was engaging, but we realized we needed a couple so that we can have two or three reading off of one Bible at a time. So thanks to you guys, we bought three more. So we have three more Action Bibles. I know. That's a total of four, which means it will serve about 12 kids because we can have three. One of them holds it, and two of them sit beside. And our youth groups are usually about 12 to 20 kids, and so it should. Um, Mommy, Sarah, right? I know. Mommy, Sarah's what? You are such a chatty little girl, and I love it. But anyway, so thank you. You guys inspired us. You guys showed us a great resource, and we have applied it to ministry. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And we're going to take those today. Oh, my goodness. ESL games for the classroom. So tomorrow, Sunday, we're actually starting our very first English class after church. And so I'll look through this tonight and see if there's a quick one that I can apply tomorrow. And if, look at that. Do you want to open it and see what it is? Okay, you open it and show us what it is. And I'm excited to see what else we can add to the class to make it more dynamic. This says interactive activities to engage your students with minimal prep. It's for coffee? What is it? I wonder if this one had a note. Nope, that's for the books. Huh. I don't know who sent this because there's not a note in the box. Whoa, we got to take those and wash them today. So whoever you are, thank you. 
you guys may not know, but I went to school to be a teacher and I got a license to teach English as another language, to teach English as a second language. And so it's something that I'm passionate about, that I enjoy doing. And we're going to start doing it at church to give our church um, people an opportunity to learn something new, help our kids with their schooling, and just see what God does. We're hoping and praying that it attracts more people to come and learn about Jesus through coming to English classes. So we're starting those tomorrow, and we will keep you guys up to date on how they go. Okay, there's one more box. Do you want to open the last box? Maybe this one has a note in it. Maybe this one has a note in it, because they came the same day, baby babe. Yeah. Yes, they did. And you've been wanting to open these. It says, enjoy your gift from Vicky. So, no. Vicky, thank yeah. you. No, yeah. Enjoy your gift from Vicky. And I'm wondering, but that's just this box. Okay. okay, so this box is from Vicky. I don't know who the other box is from. So, both Vicky and whoever else you are, if that was also Vicky or someone else, thank you. And Vicky also seemed to have the same idea. Let me tell you, when God opens doors, he provides because we just jumped in. Yeah. We just jumped right into it and said, we're going to do this and we're going to teach and I'm creating the lessons and look at literally it's the day before we start English classes and look how God is just confirming that that's something he wants us to do. Everything we do, our heart is for them to learn about Jesus. So thank you. I'm excited. This one looks a little bit easier um, and more applicable. I have one, but it's more advanced. It has a lot more writing in it. So this one should be easier to apply at the start. And then as the lessons go, I can start to use the other one that I have. If you are interested in any of these things I've showed, or if you teach English, or if you're thinking about it, I will put links to those down below um, so that if you're interested, you can check them out too. And then the last thing that Vicki sent us are some plates. They're great for communal snacks. So Thursday nights, um, we don't need one for every person. We're not serving meals every day, but it does help us when we do like fruits or communal snacks um, Thursday nights. Sunday morning, we can put bread on it. And so it's a good option so that we're not using as many paper and plastic products. So, all right. Let's end this time with one more question, and then I'll keep answering your questions as the day goes. This one's from Emily. She says, do you only do videos, or is there another way to get updates on how you're doing life, ministry? Do you send out prayer requests? So sometimes we put those in the videos. But we also have a newsletter. If you're interested in getting our newsletter, um, our email is down below. Send us an email and we will <laughs> send us an email and we'll add you to the email list. But yes, we do. We do send out regular newsletters. All right. We got more questions, but we got to get to ministry. So we'll see you in a little bit. Okay. We are officially on the road. And this next question is actually from a long email that I got and I already responded to him but I wanted to share it with you guys because it's just a great question. So Tom asked, what is the best wow gift or wow item for a girl 10 to 14 years old? Is a Barbie doll good? So we talked about this a little bit in past videos, but I have another thought that I don't think I've shared before. So yes, a Barbie doll is fine. The 10 to 14 year olds might not play with it, but they're gonna enjoy having it. So it's gonna be more of like, a display item or something that they enjoy, they're not necessarily going to play with it. So is a Barbie doll okay? Yes. What are good items for a 10 to 14 year old girl? In most countries, girls enjoy soccer. So soccer is good. Um, like a more intense coloring book. I know they make like adult, not, um, not children coloring books that are more detailed and designed. Those are fun. Um, they enjoy necklaces and like jewelry. So those are good items. And then one thing that I don't think I've ever mentioned before for 10 to 14 year olds, but I've come to realize that they enjoy them are stuffed animals. What's interesting is even adults here in Latin America enjoy getting stuffed animals. And so it tends to be a common gift, even for older teens and and even into adults, so in their 20s. And so a stuffed animal, if it's like a beanie baby or a like really nice stuffed animal, they're gonna enjoy that as well. So those are just some fun ideas. 
And hopefully that answers a little bit of Tom's question. I'm gonna read real quick because he sent a long email and let me see if he has any other questions. Okay, this next part of his email, I just wanna read you guys because they're actually really good suggestions. So he said, we include the typical 10 to 14 year old school supplies. We also send a few practical hygiene items. We send a hat, but not sure if that's cool since most places are probably hot. Hats are great. I would actually recommend like doing a baseball cap type hat because even in cool areas and colder zones, that type of hat is useful because it still keeps the head warmer than not having a hat. And it's great for areas that have a lot of sun. So my recommendation would be if you're gonna send a hat, instead of sending a winter one, send a summer type hat. Um, he also said the flip flops are the biggest ones we can get in the box and a little big for my oldest who is not quite 13. So probably perfect for 13 to 14 year old girls and boys. Yes, always err on the side of caution. Go bigger rather than smaller. Flip flops are great because they don't take up a lot of space, but you still get to send shoes. He said, we also send some pictures and plastic holders of us and a letter and some soccer players. Letters are fantastic. Pictures are fantastic. A guy I work with is from Cameroon into soccer. He claims that the pictures are famous players that boys and girls around the world will know and like. Pictures take no space and are only six cents to print at Sam's. So why not? Um, last but not least, we try to include some fun things. A Barbie plus an extra dress and extra shoes and accessories like a purse or sunglasses is the wow item. We send a pair of 12 and a pair of 14 underwear. My favorite items are the cross body bag and necklaces. So like a satchel, a cross bag and necklaces. We also include a headband and compact mirror. I think we might drop the reusable menstrual pads next year just because of the cost he explains. I'm gonna jump a little bit in his email. So then he asks one more question here. He said, so would you rather receive 20 boxes with menstrual pads or 25 to 26 boxes with no pads just because of budget. I would say more boxes without the pads is great, but if God puts it on your heart to send them, I'd say to pray about it because either way is a fantastic box. Neither way is wrong. It's just your preference. And so I'd say go for it if God leads you to it. But if God leads you to do more boxes without them, go for that too. Um, he ends his email saying, if Barbie dolls are not a good wow gift, which we talked about, for twin to 14 year old girl, then what? The OCC website says doll, clothes, backpack, or musical instrument. I see nice dresses on five below, but in your videos, no girls wear dresses. Yeah, um, I think pants are more common, but there are lots of areas of the world that girls wear dresses a lot. So it's interesting, the area that we're in right now, they don't wear dresses, but when I lived in the jungle, Every Sunday, the girls wear dresses. And so it really just depends where your boxes go and you can't know that ahead of time. So again, pray about whether to send dresses or not. It's not bad. It just really depends on the region, whether or not they're used. Um, and even if it's not as common, the girls are still gonna use them here in the city. It just might not be as common. I see nice backpacks, but with a cross body bag and a drawstring bag, do they want a backpack? I think you'd go with one or the other. I don't think you need to send all three. But again, neither one of those options is wrong. It's just your preference. I'm only asking for the 2023 boxes as we already bought stuff for 2022. Um, lots of stuff they'll get throughout the year on deals. Last part of his email, he said, boys are easy and we do the same school supplies, the same practical stuff and just send soccer balls. With boys, we also send a tennis ball. You can play catch with yourself or a friend. <laughs> Or if someone had a bat, you could play baseball and not need gloves or anything. Um, again, let me just reiterate, girls love soccer too. So if you find a good ball for a, so uh, if you find a good soccer ball for a girl, girls love them too. But Tom, I just wanted to thank you for your suggestions. Um, we just really appreciate sharing thoughts and tips from us. But then when someone sends an email like that, that has great tips to share, we love to share those as well. So while I'm getting coffee and sun tea, which is like Kool-Aid ready for kids club and youth group, I'm going to read you guys the last comment. So this one was sent in an email as well. And so this is just an opinion from a missionary, former missionary in Africa. I just want to share it with you. She said for African boys, they would want a soccer ball. And if that is all they got, they would be happy. 
She said boys 10 to 14 send soccer ball, flip flops, and school supplies. For girls 10 to 14, she said continue to send reusable menstrual pads. So Tom, there's a great tip for you from a different missionary. Um, and underwear. So for the 10 to 14 year old girls, she wants those sent. She says that they're a great tool. And here's why. She says in rural Africa or city slums, proper feminine products are always in need. She said a 10 or 11 year old might really enjoy a Barbie and play with it. Even in rural Africa or the slums, they know Disney, Barbie, and the big American brands. A 13 or 14 year old girl would still enjoy the Barbie, but might not play with it as much but would be very proud to have such a quality toy doll. She said, for girls, send underwear, pads, flip-flops, and school supplies. So two people in this same video had the same idea. And so I love to share other thoughts and opinions. If you guys have a thought on any of the questions that have been asked today, put it down in the comments below. And if I see something new or different, I'll try to share it in public with everyone as well. Or if you guys have more OCC questions or just questions in general, Throw them in the comments section and we'll try to keep answering them in the future. Okay, gonna put these cups in the wash, but one of the kids will get to serve in that way when they get here. These are the new cups. And the new plates. And then I need to get the memory verse hung for today. I've got these three Bibles that I'll go put away in a safe place with the other one until we use them with the youth group. And we have another box for recycling. We just finished kids club and youth group and we've set up for Sunday. Normally we've had a row of three in the front because this column cuts out some space, but last Sunday we didn't have enough seats. So we've set up a total of 16 chairs and then we've also added three stools on the side so that we still have a walkway. And so plan B is that if there's still not enough chairs, we will leave this door open and have the kids sit in a semicircle here and do worship from our classroom with the door open and then we'll close the door and set up on the table for church. Okay, the best problem we could have is not having enough room because that is just a beautiful testimony of what God's doing. Um, I think I'm gonna end this vlog here. I gave you guys some answers to OCC questions. Don't forget to put any more down below if you have them. And hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video and these perspectives. Love you guys and we'll see you on the next one.